Hello, and welcome to round two of the Parenting Roundabout podcast. I'm Terry Morrow, and I'm here with Catherine Haleko. Hello. Usually on this podcast, we talk about parenting issues, but once a week, Catherine and I like to get together to discuss TV, movies, books, and other entertainment topics, because it's nice to talk about something other than parenting for a change. This week, we are continuing with our watches of Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist Season 2 and Veronica Mars Season 3. Both had boyfriend troubles this week, but we'll get there. (laughs) First, we're going to talk about Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist. Zoe's Extraordinary Dreams is the title of it. And it once again posits that we are interested in both Zoe's love life and her work life, both of which... (laughs) Not so much. (laughs) But Zoe's Extraordinary Trip to a Different Place entirely. Uh Does she ever get a vacation, this girl? Wouldn't it be fun to go, extraordinary vacation. to go on a trip and like be able to read the minds of tourists? You could have interesting little production numbers in the hotel hallways, out by the pool. Think of it. You could do a whole Esther Williams thing out by a pool. <laughs> I oh. love it. That's a good idea. Instead, work and boyfriends. <sighs> All right. Okay. And more Jenna. Emily's sister. Yes, surely she could go live in the house with the mother, right? Right. I thought that she's was she's got get the now. big house, and yeah, they're besties now. So right, which is fine. I'm happy to have you know somebody to keep Mary Steenburge in company. That's absolutely fine. But other than that, she's a little much. Uh huh. And oh golly, round ten or so of Max and Simon. Right. I was afraid the dream was going to be about that she's really still in love with Simon and so she feels trapped by Max, but that didn't seem to be where they were going with it. I'm not entirely sure where they were going with it, but I didn't want to go there. Yeah, I mean, it I, It's felt to me like the old, like, uh-oh, we, we had an on-again, off-again mm-hmm. thing and we put them together and now what? So maybe we should split them up again? <laughs> You know, like the whole... Viewers love that. Sam and Diane situation, if you want to throw it way back. I mean, I thought the most of the musical numbers were good and fairly on target. And without uncomfortable lyrics, they seem to be relatively to the point. Mm-hmm. But... We also had Mo breaking up with his boyfriend. Right. So, but sort of off screen, you know, it was... It, it, there was very little Mo in this episode, but yes. when there was, was mm-hmm. conflict with the long distance boyfriend. Right. Lots of rough times. Yes. Just a hard, hard episode for boys all the way around. Darn it. <laughs> Just trying to have some fun with a softball team, and the chicks make it difficult. Oh, brother. <sighs> but, you know, I also. Yeah, I don't mind the new female programmers. I hope they kick ass. I think they're terrific. But does everybody have to have been an excellent athlete to make the point that the guys are jerks? Right. Possibly one of those three women does not really wish to play softball. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Is that that betraying the sisterhood if I say that? (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, then they certainly have no choice at this point. Um, So... Hmm. And also, like, so the point was Zoe was trying to reduce stress by yep. delegating some of her work tasks. Uh-huh. But setting up the softball team, that's what was causing her stress. Like, the, yeah. they don't know what, what she does for a living. That is that is the problem, I think. They do not know what would be on her desk. So they made a bunch of whimsical stuff. Right. And it makes her look silly yeah this was my complaint last week about her and her work right and the continuing wtf characterization of leaf uh-huh he's like a milk toast now what he was right. like a shark mm-hmm. what the heck right if they at least if they at least just had him wink to somebody to make it clear that he was just doing this to make zoe feel bad right i would buy it but dude where did you go what did they do to you <laughs> While Zoe was on leave because she was <laughs> grieving. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I didn't like him before and I don't like him now, but 
at least before he was consistent. <laughs> it's just a seasonal, a season one to season two thing. Yeah. In which case, they could have just guess. fired him. He could have gone off to do something else and they could have brought in another actor. Or he could have said, hey, my twin brother is looking for a job. <laughs> And given the way we do things here at Spark Point, just hire him. <laughs> That's right. Oh, man. it's I hate dumping on this show. I feel so bad coming here and dumping on it because it's, <laughs> it's such a sweet and, you know, musical little thing. But it's mm-hmm. just, I think they spend 95% of their time figuring out what songs they can use and... Five percent of the time, figuring out the stuff that goes around it, and mm-hmm. you know, still can spend more time on the songs, but maybe a little more time on the plot. Right, would be helpful, please. Yep, we need a little and more assistance yes. with that. I just really think somebody would have said something about an egg bar before George it all up. <laughs> I mean, I know Zoe is distracted, but do they have some kitchen staff that would have said? <laughs> I don't know. I don't understand the dynamics of this workplace. So, yeah, perhaps scary. there are no checks and balances. Well, if it's always meant to be the checking and balancing, she's she's not the person for the job, at least right now. <laughs> I don't think she's even at her best. She's possibly the person for that job. We have yeah. seen no proof, but right. OK. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Melatonin, I hear, is good, Zoe. Maybe, maybe <laughs> some. Uh, a, a prescription from your pharmacist. There you go. I would like to hear what Give your pharmacist has to sing. I bet that could be a fun one. <laughs> See, you're full of good ideas for this show. They need your help. Ooh, no, you know, go down to the to the you know Walgreens for some no dos and read the minds of all the people shopping for sundries. <laughs> exactly. Oh well, things are hmm. no more upbeat and fun for Veronica Mars, who, darn it, who would have thought that things wouldn't just be all roses and bouquets for Veronica and Logan? Surprise, finally got surprise. He finally got his head blew off. We're in good shape now. <laughs> and that kid who was, who raped me and was taunting us, yeah, he jumped off the building. So we're going to college. Good times. <laughs> <sighs> Wichita Linebacker was the title of this episode, and it was about football. And Army Hammer, young Army Hammer, was on it as the the football player who was in in need of Veronica's services. Right, the one who had his playbook stolen, which I think is a plot from the Brady Bunch. (laughs) Like, this is what we're doing? Okay. Like you said a few weeks ago, it's it's like this is what adults think college is. (laughs) <laughs> you know, fraternities, football, yes. creepy professors, I don't know. you know, jerky lampoon guys and, yeah. you know, unpleasant feminists and mm-hmm. just like constant rape. What? Why would this place not be shut down? How many? How This has been going on for quite some yeah. time. Um, what is the exactly. sheriff doing exactly? There is still no, a sheriff. Never anything useful. I think they should put Eli on it. I think he'd, you know, Weevil would find the bad guys and beat them up. Right. That was really sad. Yeah. They had sad. they had Weevil working for Keith mm-hmm. for five minutes. Yeah. And then he got upset about um, the mistreatment of a child mm-hmm. and caused him, Keith, to have to fire him. I was like, well, what was the point of that, like half an episode where Eli was working for Keith yeah. I, because it was great while it lasted yeah. you know yeah. he was so good at Although it you had to know this is not gonna end well because I I don't yeah think, I don't think Weevil is the guy you put on surveillance work he right. doesn't seem to have a really you know fine-tuned control over his anger as we saw at yes. the car wash so well and like Keith, how about not putting him on a child right. abuse case, you know, for his second task? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, when I, when I thought that he was being hired to replace Veronica, I thought he was just going to do desk work. I didn't realize that you know, surveillance was part of Veronica's job. I guess it was. I guess. But, yeah, it seemed <laughs> like the main – initially, he was hired just to answer yeah, the phone. which so. he wasn't so good at, but – 
He could have been good. He could have got good. <laughs> right. He could have learned yeah. that, yes. He's not, he's a smart person. I was surprised so. that Keith was just putting him on surveillance right off the bat. Yeah. However, you know, he's got a job at the college now. What a coincidence. So he can get everybody <laughs> back to the same place. Yay. Yep, getting the gang back I together. I don't suppose it would be convenient for Veronica to have somebody on the custodial staff who could poke into things and <laughs> plant bugs and do whatever she wants. Have keys to every room you she go. might need to get into. I'm sure that was a coincidence of the plotting that that's now convenient. <laughs> um, and speaking of offices to get into... Hey, we have Ed our well-known guest star who's probably too well-known to be a guest star in a teen show unless he's going to be doing something bad. So mm-hmm. I got my eye on you, Dean. Ed Begley. Yep, he's in six episodes. I looked it up. Oh. It's two fewer than Steve Gutenberg was in and it's two fewer than Harry Hamlin was in the first season, but still enough that he could mm-hmm. be. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Possibly he just, you know, needed to, to buy a new battery for his electric car, so he took the gig, but... <laughs> <laughs> Still, hey there. We were just wondering hey. who was going to be the big bad this season. And here's Ed Bailey Jr. strolling along. Making threats yeah. about expelling Veronica. So is he just going to be the college version of the principal from the high school who was constantly <laughs> trying to get rid of Veronica? or Who was constantly being bested by Veronica. <laughs> That's right. As she somewhat did this time. But, uh mm-hmm. Yeah. So while well, you mentioned when you when we first started about Logan, I mean, there's sort of is he being squirrely or not? And he comes back apologizing to her and um, she is going to track his car and then decides not to. Yeah. So they're both trying question. Yes. Mark? I, don't know. I mean, I don't think that simply growing up as her father's daughter is what taught him not to trust. I think she's had plenty of other reasons. Yeah. And not to trust him specifically. She's had plenty of other mm-hmm. reasons. But yes. okay. I, it just doesn't seem like, I guess, as is in Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist, when you bring people together, there's really no nothing to do plot wise, but to tear them apart. So mm-hmm. I don't expect that things are going to be easy for them, though. Goodness, can't they have a year? Seriously? <laughs> But they are both, you know, extremely damaged young people. And Mm -hmm. probably nothing good can come of them being together. Yeah. They each need to find somebody completely uncomplicated. And even then, it's right. And as we've talked about often, they all need therapy. Yes, absolutely. Each and every person in Neptune would benefit from. I think so. Some professional Perhaps some, like valium in the water supply might be a good idea <laughs> um, yeah i don't know thank goodness we don't live there <laughs> <laughs> next week we'll watch episode four of both shows for Z- zoe's extraordinary playlist season three that's zoe's extraordinary employee and on veronica mars season three that's charlie don't surf Alrighty. And we will also be listening to the Veronica Mars Investigations podcast episode covering episodes two, three, and four of season three. We've been putting off listening to it because we didn't want to spoil ourselves. So now we can finally listen. And that's going to be it for our round two today. Please subscribe to our Parenting Roundabout podcast so you won't miss any of our episodes. We have something new for you every weekday. As always, you can find recaps, links, and an opportunity to comment on our website at parentingroundabout.com. Goodbye, Catherine. Bye, Terry. Goodbye, everybody.